combination to uh, uh, win the secondary, and we got a lot of guys that are figured out four practices, two games over the next ten days. You know. Yeah, and we'll, uh, yeah, there are, there are, and a lot of uh, they're good to get against different uh, teams, different players, different schemes. Um, you know, you're working all kind of situational stuff, contingency plans, but it'll be fun. We're looking forward to going up to New York, practicing with the Jets, playing Monday night, and then we'll have Jacksonville here next week. This as kind of the back in the old, you know, the old days, I'll call it, like the dress rehearsal game. Do you treat this like that? I don't know, this I like don't know what that is. Like that's so, so, so much surface, old school conventional right. wisdom. I don't know how many people really do that. Uh, you got to do what's best for your team and the way you got to map things out, you know, depending on what day you play. So I don't, I don't know what the, the dress rehearsal is. That's like a mythical creature <laughs> that uh, I'm not sure really fully existed, but I'm sure somebody said it. Everybody ran with it. So the, 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 that and Nessie are, are mythical creatures, though. Pretty much. Okay. Um, you know, like because you guys are playing Monday night and have the joint practice, does that change maybe your approach of how you would play guys in the, in the game? I'll keep that stuff internal. But certainly everything is thought out, Michael, and just throw a dart, dart at it and say, oh, okay, here we go. Will Drake go with you to New York? Drake London? I'm not going to comment on guys that it may or may not practice. Or excuse me, how, how, if any, have you seen player development strategies change as practice rules and all have changed? Is, 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 that a, is there a big difference that in, terms of what? in terms of how you, how, what your plan is for developing guys, what you think you can get out of guys, maybe your timetable on guys, maybe even quarterbacks in terms of? Yeah, you're always looking to evolve. I mean, the rules are going to change, and they, and they always will. It's like life. life. And things are going to change. Uh, you can sit there and, and cry about the way they used to be, or you can adapt. And we're always going to look to adapt, Josh. So um, it's the only way to do it. And so with whatever rules they put in place, roster uh, restrictions, uh, how many guys you can have on the practice squad, time frame, time with the players, everybody's got the same rules and regulations, so we'll continue to adapt. But there's always thought that goes into it. Do you start? maybe moving into like, okay, we got to start prepping for week one. We got to start kind of going into that regular season. Can I keep that stuff in house? I yeah. talk strategy and scheme, Mike. I know. I just wasn't sure if there was. Yeah, I appreciate the question. It's a little different than Josh's question. There were certain things that, again, I know there's a lot of guys that want to be reality stars in this league or whatever they want to do and want fluff pieces written about them. I think as competitive as this league is, um, we would like to keep some certain strategies in house. I feel like this question is going to probably fall in that category too then. But at what point, when you have install fields, right? Like you have, at what point do you kind of have to start maybe moving guys over that are going to be on the 50 and 3 to, to no. one field, but you don't? Okay. Because of the way we are working things. We're trying to get as many reps as possible. Uh, the best way to, to learn, you know, I was joking, and they're talking about conventional wisdom. This guy's a film guy. This guy's a, everybody's a rep person. Nobody gets better, no matter what your job is, and the, the act of doing it. So, yeah, you know, if you're going to be a carpenter, you know, you might want to actually do it instead of just sitting in a classroom and watching a video of it or whatever. If you're a surgeon, you hope you need to perform surgeries to get better at it and, and on and on and on. So when you, we get the opportunities and you get as best we can to get multiple reps, it's the best way for guys to learn. How do you all address the, uh, you know, we don't want any fighting, we're just here to take care of business. Of, uh, yeah, you treat players. it like, and I know um, what goes around seems like, talk about history repeating itself, it seems like every year there's always a story, you know, and I, I don't know what happened. I just concerned with our team, and when you're competing against another team, you can't fight the game, it's not tolerated. Um, somebody gets heated and does it, there's got to be consequences. So I, I don't know how else to enforce it other than that, D-Led. If there's got somebody that's got a problem, it'd probably be a if they have an emotional control problem, Probably somebody you don't want on the field in the real games either because those people are going to be a liability. You get off the field in third down, they get a personal foul. They usually go hand in hand. And uh, how are Hodge and Bill, uh, you know, on one side, one side of the ball, Hodge the receiver, and Bill, uh, the line, outside linebacker, how are they performing for you? Yeah, they both, I think they've been, uh, yeah, they're, they're good pros. Um, different experiences to get to this point where they're at. Um, they're very pleased with both of them, enjoy working with them. Liking working with this team, beyond the competitiveness on the field, what is it about this group that, that you enjoy being around and that you, 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You like coming here and working with everybody here every day? So if you got a good group to work with, it makes coming to work a little more enjoyable. Just as simple as that. Is that just a mindset and attitude just because they're so... No, you're always looking for a deeper guys. meeting. Uh, so I don't have a deeper meaning. It's just like, like, I, like I just gave you the example. You hope to like the people you work with. Um, I like working with this team. we got a lot of good guys in here that, that come in and do things the right way. I don't have some big, deep philosophical reading for you, but pretty simple. It's the deeper meaning side, I guess, over here. Like, what is there? What is it that makes you like a team? If that makes sense. Kind of what I just said. I enjoy working with them. Fun to coach. Is that deep enough? Michael, what'd you have? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got a question? Along those lines, I mean, I know that there's so many negative narratives around your team. I was just wanted to ask you, like, what, what do you like about the team? What do you like about the team? A lot. You know, it's like a lot of things. Mike, uh, I don't know if you're as active on social media and you have the two handles like D-Led, but do you really concern with like the criticism you get from random bots or whatever? Right. So, you know, you step, no, seriously, it's like whether you're a journalist, your coach, your athlete, you're, there's always going to be peripheral opponents out there and you can't pay attention to that. So, like good or bad, you see it ruin teams and they hype you up and, you know, they lose a couple games and everybody acts like it's a catastrophic failure. Or they go the other way, and they again look at the surface. They look at dead money, and then again, there's a lot of what I call, um, you know, you really look at this. It's like laughable groupthink. It's like nobody. There's just so much like coverage around it, and it's like one person says it. Hey, I'll, I'll look at the Falcons, and I'll just write that too. And they put it into into the link economy, and articles spin off it over and over and over again. Personally, I think it's lazy groupthink. It's the NFL. It's hard. And the only way to do it every year, you're going to have a different team, and you got to earn it. And these games are going to be very competitive. And, and the way the schedule looks when they when it comes out in May, well, it's probably not how it's going to play out because there's so many variables out of your control. It takes one injury, and the team can look very different, or vice versa. If the team improves. You got young players. You got a group of guys that can fit into a system. They understand what you're asking them year two. So there's a lot. That's what makes this league fun. Uh, you know that's. You know, they have the cap the way the draft is, and it's set up for parity. It does. It does. And, but there's things that, you know, try to, you can't skip steps, you know. And um, like I said, I enjoy coming every day and working with these guys. We got, we got a fun group. I'll use that again for you. These guys want to be coached, and they're out here working hard, and we'll see where it goes. The center competition, that's still rolling. Yeah, it's still rolling. <clears throat> it's still rolling. joint practices to have some competition for the guys other than just their sure yeah you get a different scheme um you're, you're, you know the, not to get nostalgic for d-led but guys do get tired of blocking the same guys every day so it'll be fun to get to a different group uh, you know it's a four down front penetrating front schematically a little bit different so it'll be fun